Hello again, and welcome back to Educator.com's Advanced PHP with MySQL course. In today's lesson, we're going to be covering the topic of cookies. Specifically, we're going to be going over uh, what an actual cookie is. It's maybe is a term that uh, maybe something you're familiar with, or maybe is a term that you've heard um, thrown around in the web development world. We're going to talk a little bit about um, HTTP and how it's known as it's known as a stateless protocol and how cookies uh, can change that. We're going to talk about a couple of um, HTTP headers. We're going to talk about the set cookie header, which is an HTTP response header. And we're going to talk about uh, the cookie header, which is an HTTP request header. We're also going to talk about a uh, method, a function provided uh, built into PHP for um, basically what is known as setting cookies. We're going to talk about different attributes that cookies can have. We're going to talk about how to, after we learn about what a cookies are, we're going to talk about how to access cookie data within your uh, file using the cookie. Uh, there's a cookie super global variable. And then we're going to talk about security implications as they relate to cookies, or briefly talk about security implications related to cookies. So what exactly is a cookie? Well, uh, basically, it's a piece of information. It's a piece of data um, that's set by an HTTP server, and it gets sent back to a web client within an HTT response for storage by the client. So for example, um, and it's, it's done in name value pairs. So for example, uh, a server might want to set a cookie that says user ID equals 1001. Well, it'll create that cookie. And then what it'll do is using an HTTP response header, it'll send that cookie back to the client. And the client's going to store that on its local machine. Uh, cookies are associated with a particular website. And basically what happens is, is every time a client um, goes to request a page from a particular website, it checks to see if it has a cookie stored that's associated with that website. If it does, it goes ahead and in its HTTP request, it sends the information contained in that cookie uh, to the web server. So before we go into the uh, details about how the cookies actually work, I just want to talk quickly about HTTP and how is it, it's known, what's known as a stateless protocol. Basically, what that means is that for each HTTP request and res response, um, no state is preserved, which means there's no memory between one request and another. So for example, when you go to a website and you request a page, for example, let's say this was uh, your HTTP request, uh, and then your server would respond with something like this with, response, uh, with the um, HTML as part of the, uh, the body. When you do that request, let's say you do that multiple times, each time you do that, the HTTP server um, has no idea that you're sort of, that basically those are linked from the same computer. It can know that it's from the same computer, um, but basically it doesn't um, store any information about each of the different requests. So for example, uh, let's say that you were trying to implement a shopping cart, for example, and you add an item to a cart. Well, maybe what you would do is you would send a get request uh, that provides some information. Maybe you have a query string that says add item 1001. And the HTTP server is going to go ahead and process that GET request. It's going to add an item to a shopping cart. And then it's going to send the response back to you um, that maybe shows you your shopping cart. However, when you go to the next time you go to add another item to the shopping cart, how does the server know that that, that um, item 1001 is already part of your cart? Um, HTTP in and of itself doesn't have a mechanism for that. It doesn't actually store this information anywhere, uh, for example, on the server. Well, cookies are sort of a way to um, basically enable some memory, some state to occur between different HTTP transactions. Um, so for example, uh, the, or cookies is to provide uh, knowledge of previous events. Uh, so it, basically what it does is it connects one HTTP request from another. And this can be used for things, for example, like it can identify a particular client. Uh, maybe when you go to a website um, the, and you log in, for example, um, the HTTP server, when it sends you back uh, your welcome page, it'll send you uh, a cookie, which is a piece of information, and it's going to say your user ID is this. Then every time you go and you visit a page on that website, you're actually, you're actually going to send that cookie back to the server, and it's basically going to identify you. And then um, the server can say, hey, well, this is a person I've dealt with before, and maybe it can alter its page content based on that. 
Another thing that you can do is you could contain information in a cookie, such as the contents um, of a shopping cart. So for example, let's say you add a, you send an HTTP request, you um, click on a button that says add an item to a shopping cart that sends a get request with the item ID to the server. Well, the HTTP server can then create a cookie that says, okay, um, the cookie, maybe the item, maybe the cookie's name will be 1001, which is the ID of the item, and maybe its value is going to set to one, which means you've added um, one of those items to your shopping cart. Well, what the server can do is create a cookie that contains this data. It can send that back in its response to the client, and then when the client um, goes to another page on that website, for example, it's, it clicks on an Add to Cart button uh, for another item on that website. Well, because as we had mentioned, um, anytime you go to a, you have cookies um, stored for a particular website, and you go to a page in that website, you automatically send it. Well, you're actually um, when you go to add that second item to the cart, you're actually going to send this cookie um, back to the server. So now the server knows that you've already had one item in your cart, and it can add this new item to the cart. It can set uh, update the cookie to to um, reflect that. But now that it knows this information about you having this. Um, uh, item already in the cart, when it sends you a page back to view your cart, it can show both of the items because it has uh, knowledge of that. 